Damn, yeah. All right. <laughs> Guys, Trubisky comes off the bench, and the Steelers take that, Jay. <laughs> rally past Tom Brady and the Bucks, twenty to eighteen. Brady completed 25 of 40 for 243 and a touchdown, but also saw drives bogged down consistently in the red zone. You know, Gronk is starting to get on that elliptical right now. <laughs> Four times Tampa Bay drove inside the Pittsburgh 20. They need a red zone uh, situation. Three times the drive ended with Ryan uh, Suckup. How do you say his last name? I always mess that. I mess every, I, I mess every last Ryan name Suckup. up. You know, kicking like a field goal instead kicking a field goal instead of an extra point <laughs> attempt Todd Bowles on the Super Bowl hangover I think guys that's living off the Super Bowl are living in the fantasy land and mm. you got to get your hands dirty and go to work like everybody else and we've been working hard and we got to work harder you know because nobody's going to give us anything or feel sorry so we got to go back as coaches as players and the time for talking is over you either got to put up or shut up the Super Bowl was two years ago, right? Yep. So how are they still hung over from the Super Bowl? Did you see them at, on, the, at the party? Did you see them on the, at the party at the boat and everything? That was a that hell was of a party. two years ago, though. Max, they still drunk from that? Yeah, apparently. Jeez. But the problem really isn't about those sort of things. It's, look, you had a quarterback in Mitch Trubisky who prepared like the starter. And whenever your backup prepares like the starter, he can come in and do certain things on the offensive side of the ball. Then on the flip side of things, you had Tom Brady, okay, going to Robert Kraft's uh, wedding, which is fine, but it's right before your game, man. You need to be locked in and focused in, and it certainly showed against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And on top of that, he was screaming and yelling and acting a certain way toward his lineman. Now, he's got a lot of stuff going on in his life, so to speak, out there allegedly in the media, but Tom needs to just go back to being Tom, man, relax. That's the, that's the biggest takeaway for me. I mean, obviously, we can talk about on the field, but this video that's going viral of Tom yelling at his O-line. And I get that in the first half he was sacked multiple times and got a lot of quarterback hits. I get that. But when you're gone Friday night and then Saturday and you miss walkthrough and then you just show up, Key, and you're like, ah, you start yelling at people. That's going to internally, you know what, Key, we, we know about this. He's They're prepared. Pe uh, I'm not saying he's not prepared, but people in the locker room are going to start looking at you sideways oh, like, hold on, man. No, you no, can't just be cheating – the system that everybody else has to go through you know, and all of a sudden it don't work out. Guys, well, can I talk about the elephant in the room here? What's that? I know you want to stay out of everyone's personal life, Key. It seems to me, <laughs> Tom Brady seems to me to have lost weight. It seems to me like he's not eating. It seems, it, we, all, we all hear that, you know, he and Giselle got divorce attorneys and all this stuff. He is allegedly. going through, allegedly, he is going through it in, in a middle, in a midlife situation. By the way, I've been through this kind of, like, like if you live long enough, you go through it. It's a tough time of life. And I know no one feels sorry for Tom Brady, da, da, da. But, Key, you were talking hey, Jay, about. you lost weight. <laughs> That's why I just didn't sign the Jay, cross, Key, is, Key is someone who lived it, it, right, like lived in a car in high school, right? Yeah. And so had a tough childhood. Well, high school. And I was a little better than high school, backs. <laughs> what, how old? Junior high. Junior high. Junior high. <laughs> right, right, yeah. By high school, you yeah, got. By high school, we high had school he was making money. He was paying taxes mind, already. Right, he was paying yes. taxes in high school. But, but junior high school, Key's living out of a car, and he will tell you that going through what Tom Brady is oh, going yeah. through is difficult oh, I'm, by, I'm, by any dude, standard. I've gone through the divorce the year we went to the Super Bowl and won. Now, I still balled out. I put up great numbers. I did what I was supposed to. But it's very difficult. It's I lost weight. It was like, hey, man, what are you, smoking crack nowadays? And so you know, he's just, yelling at his offensive lineman. I mean, you know, he's got a short fuse right. I get it. Yeah. Right. He doesn't want to hear anything. I'm not. <laughs> Kyler Murray is irritated by Arizona Cardinals by their struggles on offense. The loss dropped the Cardinals to two and four, and and it's nine points were tied for the second fewest under Coach Cliff Kingsbury, who's a long and illustrious career led to that opportunity to be the head coach for the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals have yet to score 30 points this season. Is that combined? Just kidding. Here's Kyler Murray after the game. We moved the ball well today, I felt, you know, we just get down to the red zone or uh, pass the 50. Um, false start here, um, negative play here, and we, we just, just can't finish. Can't finish. That's that's the moral story right now. It's not finishing drives, um, not putting the ball in the end zone. Can't win like that. 
Does this feel more about what you're seeing from the defenses or self-inflicted? Not at all. Not at all. Self-inflicted for sure. I mean, they, I mean, they played. They, they played well today. Obviously, uh, holding us to nine points, but. Um, you know, the teams are going to continue to do that, continue to uh, play soft, make us, you know, methodically move the ball down there, which, you know, as you can see, I feel, you know, like I said, we, we moved the ball today. We just got, got down there and didn't finish. Yeah, Jay, see, this is why you leave things up to the experts. Wait, <laughs> because I tried to tell you his rookie year when they was rolling and I just didn't like Mighty Mouse and I didn't like the Cardinals and things of that nature. Eventually, people, these, these, these older guys with the gray hair that sit up all night long trying to game plan and scheme, They've been doing this now. They've seen this now for four years. They're eventually going to catch up to you and try to figure out how to stop you. And that's the reality of it. And Cliff Kingsbury has doesn't have a, something else in the toolbox. See, if you can't make an adjustment, it's a parlor trick. If you can make an adjustment, you can be great. But, Jay, if you can't adjust, it's just a parlor trick. When people figure it out, what are you going to do? I agree. It hasn't looked right, right? But you heard Kyle Murray talk about they can't finish drives. Let's see how they finish drives on Thursday night against the Saints when DeAndre Hopkins is back. Ooh, that's Let's just see point. when he comes back. Wait, that's a good so, point. Like, uh, they haven't I, I had hear, D-Hop. Look, he, he rushed for 100 yards on 11 carries. I, I get it didn't look spectacular. But when D-Hop comes back in the red zone, that's going to give you a different option to work with. I don't want it to work out, Jay. I want the Giants to get DeAndre Hopkins, you know. What? Oh, they, got, they can get Robbie Anderson. DeAndre, man. <laughs> Robbie, <laughs> DeAndre. Robbie almost, that was, yesterday was, wow. For a comeback to beat the Ravens, making last night one of the best days of my life. With the game on the line, Lamar Jackson turned the ball over on the final two drives with an interception and a fumble, an ill-advised pass off the fumble, too. Less than uh, a sharp game, less than sharp all game, 17 of 32 for 210 yards. Lamar got intercepted. Really, it was one of the worst decisions of his career. What do you take away from this game, Lamar? Lamar, with the way the game finished, um, you know, particularly for you, what do you take away from this game? You know, just try not to make mistakes. You know, we wanted to push the ball down the field, keep the ball in our hands. We have a chance. Key, how much is Lamar to blame for the Ravens' loss? Well, look, I think it's it's it's, it's not just on Lamar. Lamar obviously had an ill-advised interception throw. He also fumbled the ball at the end of the game there. I wouldn't blame everything on him. They've got to do a better job, one, taking care of business and protecting the football and closing things out. This team is... Certainly a, a good team, but I don't think that they're nowhere near what we thought they would be at the beginning of the season. There's just too many hiccups along the way. Yeah, I think this is the first game where Lamar is subject to blame here for the loss to a degree. I mean, you talk about the interception and then the fumble forced by Kayvon Thibodeau at the end of the game, right? Two costly turnovers, which allowed his team to get back in the game. But at the end of the day, like, this is what the Giants do. The Giants find ways to win ugly. They win in the trenches. And the narrative for me with the Ravens, they can't find ways to close games out. See, I wouldn't call the Giants win ugly. I just would call it this is what they are. This is the type of team that they are. And that's why they're sitting right behind the Philadelphia Eagles in AFC East. One thing I got to say about Lamar is I thought he was going to win MVP this year, have this incredible season. He got outplayed down the stretch. He outplayed Joe Burrow down the stretch but got outplayed by Daniel Jones down the stretch and before that by Josh Allen. And this was really a year with everything that he has on the line because he's not working with a lot on that team. He has to really shoulder the load. That was the thing that I was always afraid of, the pressing. When Mm -hmm. will he start to press thinking about the future? I don't know how many times I have to tell Key. Key, all you need is 197 yards, (laughs) two touchdowns, no (laughs) interceptions. I love what you, you give the perfect stats on that. What is he? What, what, what do you need him to be? 197 yards? Yeah, I need him to be. How many, I, how many, Lamar, I need Lamar. If we're talking about Lamar. I need Lamar to be 17 to 23, 210, two touchdowns in the air. One about, on the ground? About 14 carries for about 65 yards and one on the ground. <laughs> That's yeah. it. That's the there winning formula there for go. him. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Guys. Trubisky comes off the bench and the Steelers take that Jay <laughs> rally past Tom Brady and the Bucks 20 to 18 Brady completed 25 of 40 for 243 and a touchdown but also saw drives bogged down consistently in the red zone you know Gronk is starting to get on that elliptical right now <laughs> four times Tampa Bay drove inside the Pittsburgh 20